awful. They've got a running back that... They've mailed it in, by the way. If Saquon Barkley played on a team with a real offensive line and a better quarterback, this guy would be the best back in football, and it would not be close. Did you see him last night? You, you, he is so good. You almost feel bad for him because Eli stinks. And you got uh, Beckham done, having his meltdowns like Beckham, a baby. Beckham, and I, you know, there are so many people out there that that said, and I, I couldn't agree more that wouldn't have paid him the big money. He, I, oh, no thanks. It's that's a mess. A, that's a ticking time bomb, especially on a bad football team, and that's a bad football team. Oof. Uh, the, I, you almost feel bad for Saquon Barkley because it seems like the Giants are going to waste some of his best years here. I mean, unless they, you know, fire a bullet and find a quarterback this offseason because Eli's toast. He's He's done, and I have a feeling Skill if, his, set has left him. if his name wasn't Eli Manning, he probably would have been cut a little while ago. Right. Uh, you just you hope that the Giants can find a way to put a competent quarterback there and put it together because Saquon Barkley looks like one of those talents. He's special. Like a, like a Le'Veon Bell or someone like that, uh, you know, that – is super entertaining to watch, and if you have him in fantasy, you just love it, especially if you're in a PPR league because there was a game earlier this year, for example, where I saw Eli rolled out to the right, and Barkley just kind of looked like he was running off to the left towards the sideline just as a decoy. And Eli stops, turns around, and throws it all the way across the field to Saquon Barkley, who makes the catching had like a one yard gain, but you know he's getting like thirteen targets a game as a running back. He's unbelievable. He's the only thing about that team you should like in fantasy football. Let's go over the numbers and then we'll talk Vikings first and move our way through the fantasy card and get you some sleepers. Arizona at Minnesota. Minnesota ten uh, point favorite and forty three on the total. Cleveland at home to the Chargers. A pick'em game and forty five the total points. Pick'em game, really? Yeah. People like Cleveland and Vegas, man. They're taking a lot of steam. Miami, your team hosting Chicago, getting Terrible. three and a half points over under is forty two. Terrible football team. Carolina one at Washington and forty five. The Jets two and a half at home to Indy. Also a total of forty five. Turkey game of the week. Big there. game here. Pittsburgh at Cincinnati. A lot of fantasy implications. Bengals favored by two. The total fifty three. Tampa at Atlanta, a pinball machine. Atlanta 3 and 57. Over. See, crush the over on that game. In London, Seattle plays Oakland. Seattle's favored by 2.5 and, and 48. Buffalo at Houston. Houston 10 and 41. The Rams, and uh, we'll talk about some of their receivers that are questionable. There's seven on the road at Denver and 52. Jacksonville at Dallas, and one of the lower scoring games in Vegas as far as the over goes. Jacksonville 3 and 41. Two good defenses here Baltimore at Tennessee. Ravens 3 on the road and 42. The Sunday night game, you and I are going to be watching this one from Nashville. I, I'm already bar. looking forward to it. How about this? Kansas City at New England. New England three. The total in Vegas is up to fifty nine and a half. It's going to be so fun. Fifty nine and a half. And That's I, crazy. I absolutely hate the New England Patriots as a Dolphins rube. I seriously, Kevin, like I'm so excited to watch oh, this it's game be so Sunday much fun. night because you know you're rolling. Like I, I hopped on the Patrick Mahomes bandwagon in fantasy about three wow. weeks ago, and it's so fun to to have trains rolling. A guy like that. On prime time or in prime time against on Brady. Sunday night against, against Brady. Brady, so you know it's going to be high scoring because barring even, weather, you got to keep an eye on the weather. I still think it's going to be high scoring because you, it, New England's at home. They're not. You're not going to blow out New England at home. No. So if Mahomes, although able they to, did that last year on, on prime time, so but it was a high scoring game. It so, was super I mean, high scoring. If you're you know for a fantasy perspective, yeah. Even if if Kansas City or New England's up winning the game by 13 points. It's probably going to be thirty-eight to you know twenty-seven, something like that, where you're going to have plenty of irons in the fire and plenty of opportunities to score some big points. Monday night, San Fran at Green Bay, Packers nine and a half and forty-six That's... and a half. Now, what did you Jacksonville Dallas? You said that was forty-one. It's the lowest uh, over/under total of the week in Vegas. Man, forty. That that game has like thirteen to nine written all over it, doesn't it? Yeah, you, I still think Jacksonville can score points. You know, especially with Fournette out, they play more of a hurry-up offense. They play more in the shotgun. T.J. Yeldon is, I think, a really interesting. And we'll get to the running back position here shortly. But Bortles, you just never know with him. You never know from a week to week perspective no, you what don't. you're going to get with him. He might be the guy that puts up three fifty and four like he was two weeks ago, or he might be. You know, 156 and three picks. You just never know. 
Uh, here's a, a, a breaking news as it happens here on Friday morning. Rams receivers Brandon Cooks and Cooper Cup are both at today's practice. Both are expected to clear the concussion protocol by Sunday. Both are expected to play. So Don't throw your arm, Corgi. They're uh, doing a fist pump for Cooper Cup. You He's love my him. guy. He's my guy in season long. So, All right, here we go. Let's talk about the Vikings first and foremost. It's the first game on the Vegas rotation, and there are some fantasy implications. Big win last week. Huge win at Philly. Mm-hmm. Looks like they might have saved their season because if you go 1-3-1, one, and one, I don't care how easy the schedule gets, and it lightens up here. That's tough to come back from. Well, and you lose to Buffalo, you have to then win a game that you probably shouldn't. And they and, looked good. And they did. They yeah. looked good doing it. For fantasy implications moving forward, I don't know how Thielen can keep doing what he's doing because sooner or later teams are going to shade the way of Adam Thielen. But four straight games – or no, five straight games to start the season. NFL over 100 record. yards. Yep. NFL record. Fantasy-wise, with the targets he's getting and the catches he's getting – you know, he's he's putting up big points every single week. But now you look at DraftKings, he's 8500 the second highest priced receiver behind Antonio Brown. What do we do with Adam Thielen? Well, I'll tell you what. For my season long, I was determined to get him this year. One, because I like him, because he's obviously a maverick. And hmm. yeah, as you know, and, and you have to take kind of fandom out of it. But it's more fun to have guys in your team that you like cheering for. It's just more fun when they have success. You have kind of that double happiness. I was determined to get him this year. I think I paid 30 bucks for him. And at the time, I was a little nervous. I, I really was wanted to keep it around 26 30 bucks, and he looks like a steal oh. at 30 right now. He is number one, I, I know, in, in my league. The target volume is there. The, the receptions are there for PPR. There's absolutely, you know, you look at... Stephon Diggs takes attention away, Kyle Rudolph. The, everything plays out beautifully for Adam Thielen to continue. Now, can he go 100 yards plus every week? Obviously, no. That's not going to happen. Eventually, there's going to be a, a stinker in here somewhere. But until he has a bad week, you almost got to pay the premium price, don't you? You can't, you can't argue with the production. All right. Well, let me put you on the spot because we're going to move through this kind of quick here in, in the last uh, 12 minutes of the show. If you had to own one Viking – on DraftKings this weekend? I think I know the answer, but tell the, the listeners out there who it is and why. On DraftKings, I'm going Dalvin Cook. Love this take. $5,700, so you're getting him at a great price. He's going to be chalky. I, I really think, uh, you know, if you're in a tournament, he's going to be heavily used. Because of the price. But because of the price. People in season long are down on this guy. And, Go get him. And I, I'm trying as hard as I can. Unfortunately, I'm in a league full of Viking fans who value their their favorite players, and I get that, and that's fine. Uh, but Dalvin Cook, you look at from a, a DFS perspective, fifty seven hundred bucks. I have a feeling he's not going to be that cheap for long. Arizona surrenders more points to running backs than any other team in the league. Yep. Pace of play or the the pace of that game in terms of the Vikings should be, and we say should be, should be out in front pretty much all game long. Uh, should be running the football. You know, you you look at eventually these teams are going to have to start taking away Thielen and Diggs and Rudolph. It's going to leave him plenty of opportunities underneath to maybe get the short passing game going. Love Dalvin Cook. Mash on him this week because two weeks, three weeks, four weeks from now, he's going to be creeping back up closer to $7,000, and he may price himself out. Yeah, I think Thielen's too expensive. Because Thielen and, and uh, the quarterback have the great chemistry, I'm going to avoid Stefan Diggs. The other Viking I would look at as far as DraftKings goes is their defense. I'm with you. They overlooked Buffalo. That's not going to happen again. They're going to win this game comfortably, and their defense is going to be teeing off on a rookie quarterback in a loud environment in chase mode. I think the defense scores a touchdown. I think the defense gets multiple sacks. I think there's some fumbles in the mix. Arizona's I, offensive line is terrible, too. I think the, the Vikings yep. really – and remember, Arizona comes off a big road win, and I say big in quotation marks. <laughs> Eric, they won at San Francisco last week, even though San Francisco had 33 first downs and they had 10. This is a bad football team. This is a bad spot for Arizona. I'm avoiding – at all costs, David Johnson. I do not think he's a good play in daily this week. And the Vikings defense, I thought last week, late touchdown to uh, to Earth's side, which, you know, garbage time touchdown. I thought the Vikings defense looked like it had Finally. a little bit of its swagger Finally. back again last week. I'm with you there. All right, so the Vikings are going to win. What, are, what, are, what is Vikings defense, by the way? What are they costing? They're expensive right now on, on the weekly because 
with all the different matchups yep. and the way they slayed out, I think they're like forty two hundred. They're expensive. Well, if you can save some money going, and with that's a guy why like we've Dalvin got sleepers. Cook, we've you got can, sleepers. Uh, potentially pay a little premium price there for your defense. We're going to start at quarterback. We'll go to tight end, running back, and we'll close down with receivers. We got ten minutes to go here. This is the Frozen Fantasy from Tria Rink in St. Paul. Dan Myers, Kevin Gorg on the Talk North Podcast Network. Jim Suan's the guy at www talknorth.com if you want to be a part of this show and be a sponsor. Quarterback sleepers, you know all week, I'm all in. I'm pushing all the chips into one uh, little spot on my table. That spot is a quarterback I'm not fond of. It's not a team I like, but in in daily or weekly fantasy, it's about matchups, and I think Tampa and Atlanta will be the highest scoring game of the week. I am all in on Jameis Winston. I just don't I can't trust him. I, it's I mean, We were talking about this this morning with Devin Dubnik, who's uh, as we know and we learned last week, is all in on this stuff. He's, he's just, good, too. He's got one of those pedigrees where I wouldn't be surprised if he throws two, three picks in the first half. You know, and you know maybe it's a deflected ball, but he also has a little... He does. He has a little shady. There's risk him. involved. And that's just, why he's 5,800. But, Dan, uh, I this Atlanta I, defense is... Is terrible. I, you know, I get that. I mean, and, Pittsburgh was in a horrible position. They weren't playing good football, and all of a sudden, next thing you know... Everything's fine now with the Steelers. Now they just they play Atlanta. They they put forty plus points on the board. I, I'm not even certain that that Tampa wins this game, but I am certain that that Winston's going to get at least two, if not three, touchdowns and three hundred yards. And for fifty eight hundred, he's a guy I'm looking at. The other guys I like as well, far what about, as you see so you you what about Matt Ryan? I know he's more he's, expensive. I'm looking for guys under the radar, but Matt Ryan is always a good play at home against a bad defense. It's only a thousand more dollars. But if I'm taking higher priced players around that, like the Vikings defense, I, 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 that thousand dollars when I think oh. they're going to have similar box scores, I don't look at the. I think Matt Ryan has a similar similar box score to Jameis Winston, and the the tiebreaker for me, Dan, is this: Tevin Coleman, who now with Devonta Freeman out, gets the lion's share in the backfield, and that Smith character in the red zone. They still run the ball. Tampa has zero running game. The only rushing touchdown we're going to see for Tampa is if Winston scrambles and runs one in himself. So I'll save the thousand dollars and have the at least the same box score, if not the better box score, with Winston. I think. And this is, you know, this is what makes fantasy football fun. Give me the Cowboys defense at twenty three hundred against Jacksonville, which is fifteen hundred dollars savings off the Vikings, and give me the proven commodity at quarterback. That's fair. That, that's that's you're right. That's quarterback. What makes... I love finding the, the, the sleepers and the running backs and receivers, and we can go over that. I, I think at the quarterback position, though, Winston's got a lot of gamble to him, and I okay, well, I, I think he's going to be a little chalky too. I, I okay, think... then then go a hundred dollars cheaper. Your thoughts on Russell Wilson against a horrific Raiders defense? In, now that in you can, now that you could, that's that's the iffy part. And we the weather in London is always, uh, you know, a little questionable. It's it seems to always be raining in those London games. Right. But I feel personally, I would feel a lot more comfortable with Russell Wilson than I would Jameis Winston. And I think the Seahawks may be – that has the, the potential to be a bit of a high-scoring game. Seattle might be chasing Oakland a little bit in that game. Uh, give me Russell over Jameis. Okay, now we'll go to the tight ends quickly. There aren't a lot of options here. Cook from Oakland is a guy that I love. He's 5000 If you want to go a little cheaper than that, we talked about Atlanta, Tampa Bay. I think Hooper at 3500 Dan, is an absolute steal in yep. the red zone now especially with Freeman out. I've been high on him here for a couple weeks now. He's yeah. going to get at least 8 to 10 targets. He's going to get a touchdown. I like Hooper at 3,500. Anybody else that ca- caught your eye? Well, you, you talked about Jared Cook, and it's, it's a weird week, and we, we broke down the schedule. Uh, you did it here a little bit ago. If you're playing in one of those Sunday day games only, the noon and 3 o'clock kickoffs, you know, you're not going to have – Kelsey or Gronk, they play on Sunday night. Or Jimmy Graham was got a good matchup. Like Jimmy Graham or George Kittle, they Oof. play Monday night. Zach Ertz played Thursday night. So, Oof. I mean, all of your normal kind of go-tos in terms of name, value, and quality and production are gone. So you may have to hunt a little bit. Uh, I know you have David Njoku on your season-long team. You're not very high on him. Bad matchup this week. This week. Bad matchup in terms of opponent the Chargers, very good against the tight end. But I love the target volume. 18 targets from Baker Mayfield last uh, two weeks. in the last two weeks in the two games Baker started. Uh, including 11 catches. So Baker, you know, likes throwing to him. Will that be enough to get him across the edge? Uh, maybe he finds a way to get in the end zone this week and makes it worth your time. 3800 though, you can't argue that price, uh, especially when you consider a guy like Jared Cook, who 
I, I think he's going to have a good game, but he's at 5,000. Eric Ebron's been a heck of a find for the Colts, 5,400. Trey Burton. Now, if you want to find maybe a, a middle ground there mm-hmm. between between the top mm-hmm. end, Cook, Ebron, and, and the Njoku, uh, Trey Burton against my Dolphins, Dolphins. 